tough area has helped shape me to be a pretty tough guy on the court as well. But Kimber was a velvet sword. By that I mean he cut you, he just didn't feel it. He didn't trash talk, he just played. I'm not sure he's tall enough to ride the rides when he goes to Disneyland and he's the real thing. That kid had a heart bigger than anybody I, I can remember. Growing up playing in a park where they always kicked me off the court because I was small. People always said, oh, he can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't do that. And I'm just like, why can't, why can't I? And the little guy with the monster ticker. That's why it's called March Madness. In 2010-11, you know, I knew it was going to be a lot of my shoulders and, you know, try and lead these freshmen and sophomores. So we looked up to him and I literally thought he was a guy. When the season started, we wasn't ranked. Everybody kind of felt disrespected. Off season, they wrote us off. We weren't top 68 team, which was ridiculous. You know, it was just fuel to the fire. Well, UConn was coming off uh, a very mediocre season. And, you know, Kemba Walker was a player who, I won't say he underachieved his first couple of years, but he wasn't anything real special. He definitely had a chip on his shoulder from what the reporters were saying about our team. He was just extremely determined for our team to do something and be something. It would trickle down on all of us. We got to number four in the country, and then we got into Big East play. And you know, things started to go a little downhill from there. We ended the season losing four out of five. We finished ninth in the Big East. First game in the Big East tournament, we played DePaul. To start off at noon on Tuesday in Madison Square Garden, I mean, it's cavernous, it's empty, it's a little depressing. It was early in the day, we felt disrespected a little bit. For layup, front court left wing, goes to the baseline, and jam! The next game against Georgetown, we were just on point. Went out once again, dominate those guys. Kemba Walker, fantastic day. Connecticut 2-0 at the 2011 Big East Championship. He's gonna take the last shot. I went into my step back and from that point on, I mean, you've seen it. <laughs> Got a mismatch. Walker on the game with four. Kemba Walker, step back. Walker, Cardiac Kemba does it again. Stuck it. And UConn wins at the buzzer. Made the dude fall, and when he went in, man, he went crazy. I've never seen Coach Cal. That excited. That was hilarious. Jumping up like that, then he he kind of composed himself and realized that he shouldn't be doing that. It's a big moment in UConn history. I turned to my assistants as we walked out the floor and said, uh, we got something special going here. Walker dribbles off the count. We'll see you tomorrow night. And UConn wins again. I was fighting off the naysayers who kept saying, you're going to get tired. You got to play Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's too much. I really felt that our kids were feeding on the idea that like, they have no idea who we are. We're just getting better in this thing. Here's Kemba, coast to coast, he slams! Five games, five days, five wins. And UConn has won it! Madison Square Garden is seventh heaven for the Huskies! There was a broad consensus that UConn was spent, that they had shot all their bullets in New York, that, yeah, maybe they could win a game or two, maybe sneak into the Sweet 16, but nobody was looking at UConn saying, there they go. You know, we all felt like, man, if, if we can win the Big East like that, there's no way these teams and these other conferences can beat us. Oh! Napier, a little show and go. Oh, that will do it. Big 10th preseason in the Big East. They were not supposed to be this good. We had to go against Cincinnati, which was a, a really rough game. Oh man, we didn't want to play those guys. We didn't want to play anybody in front of Big East. <laughs> the Bearcats have scored on all four trips in this half. Walker. I tried to put my team in my back end. I just caught fire down the stretch. Splits the oh. double team. Right to the left. Walker from downtown. Walker gets the steal. Kemba Moore two. Back to Westbrook. That will do it. Connecticut Huskies are on their way to Anaheim. And the Sweet 16.
a great job up until when Jamal Franklin bumped me. Jamal Franklin, number 21, a little right shoulder blown. He thought they could have physically intimidated him. You know, he's a, a guy from New York City, so he's not going to be intimidated by too much. From that point on, I was just in a different zone. Oh. And the little guy with the monster ticker, drain it! Second half, he came out and he was, a, he was a monster. Oh, what a move. Oh! Walker, fade away. Oh, goodness! The time was going down. Williams for the win! No! We got the offensive rebound and one of the guys drove and found the guy, Jamel Holmes, who just hit a three. I felt the wind on my fingers. And when it got past my hand, I was like, and I looked back, I thought for sure it was good. We was tripping. I just remember the ball being in the air. I'm like, oh man, hey, it's my turn. <laughs> I'm just like, it's my turn how to feel that pain. I just knew that ball was going in. I kind of will to the right, left. This for the win. He caught a break. He missed and took it to the final four. No! Game over! UConn goes back to the Final Four for the fourth time. I try to just tell those guys, you know, just try to embrace it because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And Walker, Lincoln's defending, he can't stop. He plays bigger than his size. He's not afraid. He has a chip on his shoulder about who he is. And he was the guy that you had to really guard. Terrific player. He's the melody man. Can no make music from all. We fought so hard, and those guys made run after run in that game. Lamb for the lead, and Kentucky 10 down at halftime, now up by two. We just stuck with the game and pulled out a big one. Big possession here for the Huskies. Napier driving in, hits the other side. Oh, the perfect spin off the glass. Knight gives it up, Liggins for the lead. Liggins off the mark, down the round. Napier has it, but the game is over. UConn has done it again. It's time to settle the madness. Pull up, give them no. He takes it inside and draws the foul. He's heading to the line. I think it'll be important for him to make one or two in this game as Smith comes over for the block. It was a pretty rough first half of the Butler game. That one rattles out. Smith has it. He waits. I mean, obviously, it wasn't a pretty game. You know, both teams really defended well. And Smith drives in, and that's a charge. The Butler have the lead at halftime. Mack with a long range shot. Yes! Butler at the buzzer! Get in the locker room and uh, coach, start throwing stuff. Couldn't even score 20 points, which just wasn't the kind of pace we needed to be playing. And we just make a few adjustments and make them try to play quick. We was upset. We went out and, and we played like that. We played mad. That pass stolen. Lamb on his way. Bending bounce pass. Walker oh, lays wow. it up and it goes. And a foul on Mack. He knows it's done now. They win the Maui Invitational. They go five for five at the Big East five days. And then the six game run through the NCAAs. That was our 11th win of the postseason, and man, it was just so surreal. You see something like Kemba Walker and, and what UConn did, you don't forget that. Most of the time in life, very few people become what they can be. We did. A Husky team that in desperate games was undefeated on the year. If somebody was to tell me that we're going to play the first night of the biggest tournament and go to win national championship, 
Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't believe him. <laughs> it was like a movie. <laughs> He's gonna let Kimba hold it. It was unbelievable.